I read somewhere, I think, that the average television with cable has in excess of 200 channels on average. Some even more. I mean, some 300, uh, probably some of them even have 500 channels. And of all the channels that are out there, the program that I choose to watch and prefer to watch the most is a squiggly green line on a monochrome screen. <laughs> all kidding aside, um, welcome to part two of the oscilloscope series. Um, what you're seeing is a uh, oscilloscope that we just finished restoring and repairing in the, in the first video in the series. And to turn on some lights, um, this is a DeVry, as you can see up here, from DeVry Schools uh, kit oscilloscope. It was actually a kit that was built by somebody. Um, way back, maybe even as early as 1969, 1970, I don't know. And uh, I really feel for the individual who built this thing because he did a fant he or she did a very fantastic job putting this kit together. Um, the, all the bends and the wires were perfect and crisp and neat. Um, all the solder joints were neatly put together. Um, everything was just right except for one little wiring mistake that obviously caused this not to work. And I often wonder, um, you know, whatever became of the person who built this. Did he go on or she go on to become an electrical engineer um, or even stay in this industry? I don't know. Um, I wonder if it was frustrating when this thing didn't work for them or if maybe it was just something they assembled and got their grade on it and it kind of went up in the attic and never thought about it a second time. I don't know. But uh, to whoever it is, I want to dedicate this video to that person who did such a wonderful job on this thing. And I hope if that person is, is watching, um, this was purchased at a flea market in Ohio. And I do know that DeVry Institute, or at least I think, I'm not 100% sure about the school, but to my understanding, I believe that they had a school in somewhere around Cincinnati or Columbus, Ohio. And they had another school in Chicago, Illinois. And uh, since this was picked up in the state of Ohio at a flea market, um, I, I'm assuming it must have started its life out somewhere around there. So uh, wherever it came from, and it says here, you know, Chicago, Toronto. So I wonder if maybe... You know, this came from the Chicago school, somebody that went there. I don't know. Whoever you are, thank you. And uh, this was really fun to work on, and I'm glad I could get it working. So this is going to be a really good video. We're going to start. Um, I'm going to try to break this up. I really gave a lot of thought as to how I wanted to do this series on the oscilloscope. And I think what I'm going to do is we're going to start through a chronology of the early scope designs like this one. This is kind of the first practical design. This isn't an old scope as you know as compared to some other scopes out there. There are scopes that were built years before this one. But as far as the design goes, this type, this generation of design is one of the earlier or the earliest types that was practical to be used as a piece of actual test equipment. Uh, there were other types of oscilloscopes out there. They were more of a novelty type thing. But this would be something someone could really put on their bench and use for things. Now, first of all, this let's talk a little bit about this scope. This is about as basic as you can get for oscilloscopes. It is. It can measure amplitudes of voltages. Um, we did calibrate this a little bit so there is a little bit of accuracy to it but it's not perfect and uh, so it can look at voltages over time but it cannot measure time. We don't know what the, what the period, the time period is from this peak to this peak. You know frequency is one over time 
okay, giving you guys just real basic understanding of what an alternating signal is. And so in order to do that calculation, we have to know the time. So we would measure the time from one peak to the next peak, or one peak to the next peak, and then we would take the reciprocal of that, or take one divided by that time period. And that would give us the frequency, and that frequency is measured in hertz, or cycles per second, okay? So we could know how many of these cycles, one cycle is from here to here to here. That's one cycle, okay? And, or from here to here to here is one cycle, okay? So, but in order to know that, we have to accurately be able to measure from one point to the next point, okay, through that cycle. And this scope does not permit that, okay? So, see, I can adjust this horizontal all over the place, and I can make these... <laughs> so, you really don't have a point of reference in this type of oscilloscope. So, this is why we call it the most basic of oscilloscopes. We can look at the shape of a waveform, of, of a moving signal, or an alternating signal, so we can get it like we can tell this is a sine wave or a sinusoidal waveform and if I change it uh, and we look here let's see if we can even get it to sync up and you can see that that's a square wave and you as you can as you can tell this thing really doesn't like square waves does it and we'll get into that a little bit later okay but suffice it to say that this thing really kind of likes sine waves a little better <laughs> we'll talk about that a little more here as we get into it so the point is we can tell what a waveform is and get a rough estimate of how many volts peak to peak it is. Now, these older scopes were called AC coupled scopes. So this is something you'll want to remember. An AC coupled scope means that the signal, okay, let's raise this up a little bit. Look down here. The signal going into the vertical input of your scope. So this is the input that measures volts. And I just have a signal coming from a signal generator into this little banana plug adapter. And this input can only react to an alternating or moving signal. Um, and the reason being, the reason for this, we looked at on our schematics a while back. Here's your vertical input. That re represents these two little input jacks. And it goes through this line here, whichever one you select, this one, this one, this one, this one. But as soon as it comes through here and it picks it off, it goes right into a capacitor. You see that? And that capacitor can pass AC signals but it cannot pass a direct current or a non-moving signal, DC. If we put DC in there, you'll get nothing on this side. Okay, so as soon as you first connect it, it'll jump, and then it'll stop. Okay, you won't see anything. So, this scope is somewhat limited uh, in what you can measure. Uh, if I look at the more modern oscilloscope over here, it can measure DC. If I put a DC level in here, in this jack, you'll just get a straight line and it will rise to whatever DC level um, that I put into the, you know, into the input. Because um, this is a DC and AC coupled scope. You can select, you can go in here and you can tell it DC or AC input, okay? 
and we'll get more into that when we get into this generation. We're going to ignore some of that for now, so don't worry. We'll, we'll explain all this later on, but let's just focus for this video on the AC coupled scope. This is the most basic, so we're going to start at the beginning where oscilloscope started, and we're going to learn from there. So rule number one on these older scopes is you have to have an AC signal on the input okay the next thing is it really doesn't work very well with with non sinusoidal waveforms or it can work with certain things but it does not like any place where there's a flat spot so like a square wave as you noticed when I switched over to square wave it really did not like that okay now if I go to a higher frequency okay and I try to sync it up and I drop the voltage down a little bit and I sync it up here if I can <laughs> it won't let me sync not quite enough output there how's that there we go and you can see as we get to higher and higher frequencies this scope really doesn't like working with them it gets kind of finicky see that <laughs> you get all kind of strange looking things there we go they fold over and this is one of the faults with this type of oscilloscope okay so there we're looking at oh let's see this is so far we're only looking at a 5 kilohertz sine wave so it's not really high frequency is it um but if I go to a square wave, that doesn't look very square, does it? Do you see it? It's not very square. And if I look over at this the other oscilloscope, let me turn off the glare, you can see we have a really nice square wave. Doesn't look very much like this one, does it? And that is because this is an AC coupled scope. All right, just the design of how it's made. There's not, there's really nothing wrong with this scope right now. It is working just how it was designed to work. So, understand that my kids like to stomp around in the house. You'd think I would have elephants in the house, but I don't. Those are kids, <laughs> and they're. I shouldn't call them kids. Some of them are graduated from high school, but, you know, they never grow up. They still do this. Anyways, um, so you, you need to understand that this scope is going to be very limited. The other problem is this input connector is just a couple of banana plugs, which is not very conducive to high frequency. So you'll find out as we keep going higher and higher in frequency, um, okay, so right there is 50 kilohertz. And as you can see, I can kind of get it to sync up, but we can't see it. So the bandwidth on this scope is really pretty, pretty rough. Okay. And we cannot sync it up at 50 kilohertz. So this is not an oscilloscope that you're going to be able to look at um, any kind of RF or anything like that. Okay. So no matter what I adjust, 
this is all you're going to get is just a bunch of garbly goo you can see I can try to adjust the uh, the adjustment on there but you, you just can't can't get it okay there we go oh, I got something there's 50 kilohertz uh, and I'm pretty maxed out now with my settings alright and then we can adjust it down a little bit to fit the screen and turn it and I got the intensity cranked way up and that's about all she'll do <laughs> we're maxed out and of course if we go to our newer oscilloscope again perfect waveform so for those of you who think you know you're just gonna go out and buy one of these off of eBay for 10 bucks and put it on your bench and be able to fix everything uh, I wouldn't recommend this but it is a good teaching tool and the reason it is is that it doesn't have a lot of the complicated controls that the newer scopes have this is a really good way to get a representation of what an oscilloscope is and what it does okay on a on the most lowest basic level and uh, you can tell that because the whole thing fits on a eight and a half by eleven inch sheet of paper there's the whole schematic and really the difference between this scope and a modern scope there are some differences but at the core of it what it's supposed to do is the same thing it is looking at voltages over a period of time now it really wasn't until companies like Tektronics came out with the more modern um, time base calibrated time base oscilloscopes that you could measure the period of time and accurately where remember how on the last video we were talking about this setting here see it's set at 10 right now that means 10 volts per centimeter or per, per graticule here each graticule is one centimeter so if I count from the bottom of you know of the of the waveform and I count how many graticules all the way to the top one two three four five six seven that would indicate that this is a 70 volt peak to peak signal okay that's essentially what it would look like um, truth of the matter is that's probably not a, this is probably not accurate um, the other fault with this is you look in here and you have capacitors and you have these trimmer capacitors that are supposed to kind of compensate but as you vary the frequency on this the accuracy of this is going to change so again this is not going to even be a good voltmeter so really what the only thing this is good for is displaying a basic waveform of something so if you want to look at a power supply to see if there's ripple or you want to look at you know a, a sine wave generator to see if it's a you know a clear sine wave or not uh, you can do that but that is about all you can do not much else okay uh, let's turn this back down to a more reasonable frequency all right uh, let's see if we can get it to come in here a little bit clearer There we go. So we're back to 5 kilohertz here. So you can see how finicky this is. And as you notice, I didn't change the amplitude um, of the signal generator, but if you notice, the amplitude changed on the scope, even though we calibrated it. We calibrated it at 1 kilohertz, but when I set this to 5 kilohertz, it's off if I set it at a different frequency it would be on at that frequency and off at others so this is not a really accurate oscilloscope alright so
So all we can do is basically look at a waveform. All right. So let's let's just talk about that a little bit. The different parts. All oscilloscopes have two major sections to them. And then from those sections, I'll say that there are subsections that enhance those sections. So you have vertical and horizontal. Vertical is the up and down, and it's controlled by voltage. When I vary the voltage on this, it makes that dot sweep up and down. Horizontal is a, basically an oscillator for right now how it is. Now we can talk about X and Y mode and listen to you patterns and everything, but that's different. We'll get into that way later. But if you remember from our schematic, the horizontal is basically a ramp generator. You have a ramp generator here that generates uh, what's, what's a, it's a sawtooth. Okay, so at the beginning, when you're down here, like we said, the trace is all the way over here. Now let's see how slow we can get this to slow down. Uh, let's see. I don't even know if I can get this to slow down. To where you can see it. There we go. So that's kind of slow there. So you see how it's kind of flashing? That, that little dot is sweeping across the screen and then resetting itself and coming back and sweeping in. So when this ramp generator is down here at the bottom, it starts to, it, this, the dot is at the edge of the screen over here. As this ramp increases in voltage, it increases the voltage on this circuit right here and it moves the signal from one side to the other side and it pulls that it deflects that dot from this side to this side if I had a perfect balance of voltage in between these two the dot would be right in the middle okay so all we're doing is just repeatedly sweeping this dot back and forth. So we're just giving a an element of time so that I can paint a picture across the screen. And why would I want to do that? Well, if something happens, and you can see here, as I touch my finger on here, let me take a little, see how I can touch my finger? The capacitance from my skin, from my finger, will induce a noise, and that noise is representative of that voltage and how that voltage is varying out of my hand over time. Okay? So the same thing's happening on this signal generator. All it's doing is it's just ri rising and falling the, you know, the voltage up and down, up and down, up and down over a period of time. And if, if we did not have a horizontal sweep, all you'd see is a straight line up and down. They would be going up and down at the rate that that AC signal is alternating. So it wouldn't be much to look at. All right. But when you add this component of the horizontal line, as it's rising up, it's moving sideways too. So it actually gives you the illusion of painting a picture, just like this. Okay? And that's exactly what an oscilloscope does. There you go. So, here we go. Now, how fast that signal is alternating, okay, will dictate how fast we need that sweep to go across there to actually catch a full waveform. Okay, and that's what I'm doing when I'm adjusting this sweep adjustment. Okay, so I'm adjusting my time of sweep, how, how much time it takes to go from here to here. And then as I adjust that, I'm fine-tuning it with this knob. And the way these old scopes work is you actually have two 
ramp signals you have the one that is your oscillator and then you have a second one and by joining those two together they actually can synchronize this signal to keep it from it you're basically changing where where it starts and stops and how fast it's sweeping and when you get that all dialed in if you don't get it right you can see each time it sweeps it sweeps in a different place but if I move this little adjustment just right which is the same as moving this little sync adjustment over here you're, you're adjusting then right over here sync control um, you can actually trick it into timing itself so that it it's in step with the uh, you know with the signal that you're measuring now newer scopes such as this one have a, a supporting circuit okay a subset sub sub circuit as I told you earlier of the horizontal called your trigger and the trigger actually is a lot more advanced than just your sweep sync adjustment so as you notice this one kind of bounces around and flickers and so forth but if you look at the one here it is rock solid and it's rock solid because of that trigger circuit all right so that's another difference between the old scopes and the new scopes but before that was ever invented this is what we had to work with <laughs> and it was it was fidgety at best um, now you also had a horizontal input you see this and this horizontal input actually will help will cause the thing to sweep from right to left so this is just like the vertical when you switch this into horizontal mode or into um, external sweep mode if you notice look what I'm getting just like I told you a straight line so that signal is still varying but since there's no time element to it it doesn't sweep across now if I add some sort of an AC signal like my finger you can see it spreads it out but it's not synced up because the frequency that's in my finger doesn't match the frequency coming out of the signal generator okay are you following me so far now I should be able to I have never tried this yet on this if I plug in this and I connect it to this we get what's called a list as you pattern and you can see it right there okay and by adjusting that and what's happening is as it's going up and down it's going side to side so once I adjust this fine tuning with the frequency going in here I can make a signal okay so now instead of using that internal ramp generator and I'm and putting the ramp in there I'm putting a sine wave in there and that sine wave instead of causing a sweep it's actually causing it to create what's called a lissajou pattern so just as it's going up and down it's going side to side at the same rate all right and if we adjusted this just right um, let me see here we should be able to we may even be able to get it to uh, turn into a circle but it's really hard to get these to line up properly so there you have it and we put this back into time sweep mode and then we can sync it up And there we go so that's essentially what you're doing now why would I want to ever look at this <laughs> what good is an oscilloscope well it's good for a bunch of things 
even even this cheap scope and I, let's set something up and I'll show you what I'm talking about so what you see before you here is a little schematic that I just drew up real quickly of a DC power supply and this is a most basic little power supply you could get a bridge rectifier a little transformer for a 12 volt power supply so we want to run our car radio or our CB radio in the house so we got a um, transformer a bridge rectifier and a little smoothing capacitor and when we hook it up to our radio it makes a terrible sound it makes a terrible hum so we get out our voltmeter and you can see down here let's move this down here and you can see here's the transformer it comes out of the windings goes into our bridge rectifier with our capacitor and lo and behold I put my voltmeter on there and what does that say twelve volts so I'm actually getting 12 volts DC look DC see that DC so just using my voltmeter I wasn't I'm it's telling me that it's not the power supply I'm getting power and it's the right level of DC but let's hook it up to this oscilloscope and see what we get because remember I told you that this old scope can't read DC voltage can it so it's probably not going to read anything is it so we're going to hook this into our vertical input and lo and behold what's that what is that my goodness what are we seeing that sure doesn't look like DC to me does it that looks like some sort of a sine wave or something doesn't it well <laughs> obviously there's a problem with our power supply that our meter didn't pick up so let's look down here if you look at this capacitor it's not correct connected right both of these leads are connected to negative leads huh so what happens if we hook this up the correct way kind of like that what happened to our oscilloscope signal hmm interesting what if we connect this up to our voltmeter again I wonder what will happen what's this it's not 12 volts anymore first of all it's 19 volts so what the heck does this all mean hmm think about that for a second and we'll come right back we're back to our little schematic here now think about this what is going in here right is our 60 Hertz sine wave right so 60 times per second we go positive then negative then back to zero again so zero to positive to zero to negative to zero that's one cycle and it's doing this 60 times per second or 60 Hertz whenever we go positive and the output of this transformer goes positive with respect to ground the voltage can flow through the one diode this way and it cannot flow through this diode because this side is negative right now so it can only flow th in the negative direction so we have positive and negative when it goes this direction this diode blocks it because now 
it's a it's a negative going up here and the positive is down here so the negative will flow through this diode and the positive you guessed it goes through this diode and we still have plus and minus here so no matter which way we go this side always is plus this side always is negative however this signal is still rising and falling isn't it the only difference is at the output here you're getting this okay so what you're seeing is a full wave rectification okay so but you are still going from full positive to ground to zero volts to full positive to zero now that meter can't see that that meter just averages this out and displays it as a representative DC value okay and because that peak voltage was higher than you know than 12 volts the average of it though was 12 volts your meter my meter was displaying 12 volts DC so really it doesn't give you the whole picture it doesn't tell you what's really going on if I hook something like this up to my radio it's going to hum it's going to give me a 120 cycle hum because there's going to be 120 of these little bumps in each cycle in each second okay for each one second there will be 120 of these bumps or two of these bumps for each cycle do you ever have an old uh, radio especially the old tube radios that you turned it on and it hummed with that sound that's what it is the capacitor was bad and the capacitor was not filling in these gaps and making it smooth okay that's what a capacitor does it charges and the charge of the capacitor holds the load until the voltage from your transformer builds back up again so that's why you have a capacitor when the capacitor is bad you get that hum and really when you read it with your DC voltmeter you have no way of knowing that that capacitor is bad unless you really understand the circuit and you understand that you can turn the meter on AC I understand that guys all you electrical engineers out there will say well dummy just put it on AC well we're trying to prove a point here of the scope so your your DC meter will not read correctly but when we hook an oscilloscope up to that signal even though this thing couldn't tell me how many volts and couldn't tell me how many Hertz it did tell me that I did not have a DC signal on there and it did show me what the signal did look like okay that's why this scope was such a revolution you know before an oscilloscope there was no visual method of seeing what the signal was doing you couldn't tell you could either tell on or off you know that's what the DC voltmeter was doing it was saying you either had the DC or you didn't and it gave you the level but this finally lets you see a pictorial representation okay so even though this seems useless to us today this was really really helpful back then and this would be the kind of things that you would use an early oscilloscope like this for for looking at checking for like filters being bad um, being able to look at waveforms you know little waveforms and as these developed and got higher end now this is a very low end this is not a laboratory grade scope this is something that a student built in a class to understand the concept of how an oscilloscope works just like we're learning right now okay and this gives you an idea of what it did now better versions of these were built you know shortly after this type of thing came out and when this one came out there were much better ones than this that would allow you to look at faster times for instance this one you know we had that 50 kilohertz signal and it was kind of struggling on that um, and as you got to higher and higher frequencies it gets even more difficult part of that was because of the capacitive coupling at the inputs like that um, those capacitors will do have reaction or reactants um, 
you know, the, the types of resistors they used, the wires that were in there, they were inductive. You know, you actually had an inductive and capacitive reactance at the input of this that would modify that signal. So at high frequencies, this scope is not very good. It really isn't very useful. But for the types of things I just showed you, like looking at a power supply at line level, or looking at an audio signal to see if it's working, you know, see if you've got audio, great. It works very good for that. Um, now, the next revol evolution in this type of oscilloscope was we still had the old vacuum tubes. <laughs> we still had the horizontal vertical thing. Um, but they change some of the circuitry at the input that will allow this thing to read all the way down to DC. And it's going to be a lot more accurate um, from DC up to a certain frequency. So you don't have the kind of problems that you see in these scopes where as things, you know, frequencies and things change, the signal gets more and more distorted from what it should look like. All right. And so you can see that in like the ICO 460, for instance, that was a, a lot more advanced scope than this one. They, they came in kits also you could build. Heathkit made kits that you could build also. They were a lot more complicated. They had more tubes in them, uh, a lot more circuitry, had a, some more knobs on them. Uh, later on, they went to dual trace where it could actually put two traces at, at the same time on the screen. We'll get into that sort of stuff later. And then later on, we even went to scopes that had triggering, okay, that, so I didn't have to fiddle with these little sync knobs to get the signal to stop bouncing around and looking all distorted, okay. So that's really all I want you to get out of this first class, okay, this first video this on, on scopes. Um, a scope is looking at two things, voltage over time voltage during a time frame okay and the faster you set the horizontal sweep the smaller the time frame that you can display in one screen and the idea is you want that sweep to move slow enough or fast enough to be able to catch at least one cycle of your waveform before it gets from this end of the scope or screen to this end of the screen that's really all you're doing with horizontal you're just setting how fast you want it so you can stretch out that signal or compress that signal down enough to fit it in the screen. And also, the, with the vertical, you're adjusting your vertical input sensitivity so that you can fit the amplitude of that voltage within the height of the screen. And that's really what you're doing with horizontal and vertical adjustments. You're just fitting it in there. Really on this scope, you're not really measuring very much more than you're just looking at a representation. As we get into newer scopes, we'll find out that we can actually measure things at very accurately sometimes. Okay, so I hope that you kind of got something out of this. This is a very, sh this is a shorter video on this, um, but this should give you a little idea of where we all started with this. I mean. My first oscilloscope was very similar to this one. It was a little more advanced. It could work at a little higher frequencies, but it was massive. It was about double the height of this, probably weighed about 50 pounds. And it was rusty. It was old. It was out of calibration. And the screen, it had a nice 5 inch CRT like this at one time, but it had long since gone bad and somebody had taken a little three inch CRT and stuffed it in there so I had this big empty gap around here and this little tiny screen in the middle but in spite of all those problems and how bad the thing was and how big and bulky and nasty I was at least able to connect it up to a signal and do what we just did here a minute ago and that is when I worked on my old radios I could look at a power supply and tell you if there was ripple or not. Um, I could look at a basic audio signal and tell you if I was getting audio. You know, if you wanted to look at uh, the output of an amplifier without a speaker, you know, you could connect a resistor and connect this across it and at least see your sine wave, whatever you're putting in it. I mean, that was a big thing for me when I was 12, 13 years old <laughs> learning this. 
Um, so, you know, these were good scopes. Now later on I went, you know, I got a nice dual trace scope. It was still only a 15 megahertz. It was really basic, but it could, you know, it was could actually read voltages and it could read frequencies. So that was huge for me back then. Uh, that was a little little while ago. <laughs> anyway, um, that's the basics of what an oscilloscope does and how you would use it in the very most rudimentary form. Now for the next video that we're going to do, we're going to talk a little bit more about these scopes, okay? And we're going, and this is actually still pretty modern, but that's kind of the next version I have anyways. And we're going to kind of look at things like um, DC inputs, at triggers, uh, you know, what a trigger is, and we're going to look at vertical sweep time, um, calibrated vertical or horizontal sweep, I'm sorry, horizontal sweep time, and I mean calibrated horizontal sweep time, okay, where we could actually measure these graticules and know the frequency of that s signal from measuring how many graticules, okay? So that's what the next video is going to do. I think that's enough of a bite to take on this one. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, some of you it might have been boring and re review. Some of you it might have been uh, confusing and I apologize if I confused you. Um, go ahead and use ask the questions. You know that's what the comment section is for. Uh, you all have my uh, you know how to, how to I showed you how to get a hold of me on the last Q&A video and uh, I'll try to answer your questions. Um, but the next time we're here, we'll have another scope out and we'll look at some more things and kind of look at how these controls have evolved from this type of scope to the newer style. So I hope you like this little video here. And if you did, give me a thumbs up. And as always, I am very appreciative of all your wonderful comments. And I thank you all for them. And I appreciate it. And it's what keeps me going. And uh, I wish you all the best of health. I wish you all peace and joy in your lives, and I ask that you please don't keep the faith, share it with others, and have a great day. Thanks.